Hello, everybody. I'm Andrew Parkinson with Cruising World. Thanks for joining us for the official Cruising World 2024 Boat of the Year competition's big reveal, which we're airing live here for the first time ever. This year, a strong fleet of 19 contenders competed for top honors in our annual Boat of the Year competition. Once the spray had settled and the votes were tallied, our judges awarded prizes in seven categories for model hauls and multi hauls. Joining me today are this year's Boat of the Year judges, Herb McCormick. Mark Pillsbury and Tim Murphy. Welcome, fellas. Hey. Hey. Hello, hello. I guess we'll just start and say, wow, what a competition this year turned out to be, right? It was another great year, Andrew. We had, uh, we've gotten lucky now three years in a row with some really great sailing conditions. Uh, we It wasn't perfect across the board. We had a couple of light air sails, but almost every one of the nominees got to strut their stuff in, in, the, in the breeze that they were designed to sail in. It was great. Even on the light air days, we had spectacular, a couple of spectacular boats that sailed just about wind speed in, in five and six knots of breeze. It was lovely. That's great. And a testament to some of that great build quality out there. Um, well, let's let's get started. We don't want to keep these uh, viewers waiting any longer. Let's reveal some winners, shall we? Mm -hmm. We'll start with the midsize cruiser category. And uh, as you guys know, for many cruisers, Roughly 40 feet of length overall is kind of a sweet spot, especially for a lot of our Cruising World readers. The midsize cruiser division was stacked as it usually is this year with entries from some longtime veteran builders. And our nominees this year were the Beneteau Oceanus 37.1, the Dufour 41, the Elan Impression 43, and the Hallberg Rossi 40C. And the winner this year of best midsize cruiser was the Hallberg Rossi 40C. Now, Tim Murphy, uh, you noted in, in your notes, arguably, you said the Hallberg Rassi 40C was the best built monohull in the fleet. Systems wise, it was definitely the best in show. Would you like to expand on that a little bit? Oh, yes, indeed. The, the way this boat was laid out was just so perfect for somebody who'd be um, cruising and, and kind of maintaining their boat as they go. Everything was just laid out and labeled and um, easy to follow. And, you know, for basic service on the engine, um, Everything was right there within reach. Uh, it, it was it was beautiful. I'd, I'd love to be living and working on that boat. It was a really tremendous use of space with this boat. The, the, the 40C has the same cockpit size as their 44 footer. And it's just a beautiful boat to sail. It's, it's really laid out well and uh, everything's where it should be. Uh, Halberg Rossi is, has kicked it out, knocked it out of the park here in a few years in a row here at Boat of the Year. And they did it yet again this year. Yeah, it was, it was a real heirloom quality boat. I mean, you just stepped aboard it and you felt right at home. I mean, for a cruising couple, this would be a boat seriously to look at. I mean, you've got all the accommodations you need and, you know, this one had already had quite a few miles on it and it looked pristine. Boy, it was, it was just a lovely boat. Thanks guys, that's great. And uh, congratulations to Halberg Rassi on the 40C. Moving on to full-size cruiser. Designing and building big cruising boats is in a constant state of evolution. And that was certainly on display this year with a trio of nominees for best full-size cruiser. So without further ado, this year's nominees for best full-size cruiser were the Genoa Yachts 55, the Hansa 510, and the Halberg Rassi 57. And the winner is the Genoa 55. Quote from Herb McCormick, we've seen Genoa take chances before and they always seem to come up aces. This yacht above and beyond our contest is destined to be a winner. Guys, uh, Genoa 55 in this category, uh, what's your take there? Well, I'll, I'll jump in and get it going. It was, it, was a, it was a really fun boat to sail and it was a design like nothing you've ever seen. I mean, you stepped aboard and you had this huge entertaining area on the stern and then you moved up and you had two very well-positioned home stations, all beautifully protected by a Bimini and a hard Dodger. A lovely nav station up under the Dodger where you could see the whole world. I, it's just the boat really, as soon as we stepped aboard under sail, the boat really lit up for me. This was a boat that I had a bit of a hard time. Uh, the first When we first came on board, I, I actually had a hard, difficult time trying to figure out what the concept was. We had a, a expansive deck on top and then went a very compartmentalized interior. This is one of the boats that, as often happens in Boat of the Year, we have one impression when we're on the dock, and then we get an under sail, and it all comes together, and it certainly did here. This is a really well-executed yacht, very innovative, and I think it really stood up as uh, the best of this trio. 
One of the things they told us when we went and first looked at the boat was that, uh, you know, within Geno, they noticed that a lot of their owners or customers who have come from smaller boats, say the 34 footer, and they move up and when their customers get into these larger sort of mid fifties boats, they, um, uh, they may start looking at catamarans. And so this boat was laid out in the way that, that a lot of catamarans are, where you have separate social spaces from your working spaces. So it, it really was an in innovative way of using the space of a you know, mid-50s monohull. That's great. Thanks for the insight, guys. And congratulations to Juno Yachts 55, best full-size cruiser for Boat of the Year 2024. Moving on to Performance Cruiser, uh, we had a pair of sleek, fast, beautifully presented yachts from Italy that were nominees for the top performance cruiser this year. And um, I guess it's important probably to qualify what that really means, performance cruiser. Can, can one of you guys maybe explain that concept a little further before we get into the category? Yeah, I think the crossover is a very good way of, de of defining these kind of boats. This is a boat that you can go out and you can actively race. This is a, uh, a boat that you can do the Newport Bermuda race. You can do the Marblehead Halifax race. And yet it has all the accommodations to go off with your family, to have an extended cruise. You could, you could go long-term cruising on this boat, or you could take it off for a couple of weeks. It really is a dual purpose boat. And that's what we have by Performance Cruiser with an emphasis on really great sailing performance. And for our Performance Cruisers this year, our nominees were the Italia Yachts 14.98 and the Solaris 44, a couple of heavyweights there. Um, the winner this year, best performance cruiser, Italia Yachts 14.98. Uh, Tim, you said in your notes that the Italia was one of the most powerful close-winded sailing experiences you can remember, uh, called it an exemplary performance sailboat. Uh, Mark, you had kind of a, a, a humorous take there too. Uh, during your dockside visit, uh, the builder's representative said the boat was designed to fit out for a cruising customer who likes performance and speed. He called the boat an upwind missile. And when you got to sail the boat a few days later on a breezy morning, you could all see just what he meant. Uh, would you guys like to expand on that a little bit? Standing at, you know, at the wheel when the boat was powered up, I mean, was, you felt like you were just absolutely on a rocket ship. And then, you know, while these guys took the wheel, I went down and just sat down and killed some time. You know, like I, you know, took, took it easy for a few minutes and down below it was absolutely peace and peaceful and quiet and just the ride was smooth as silk it was it was a it was a wonderful hour or so of uh floating around out on the water the build quality was was uh, really put to good use on this boat they use a lot of um, carbon fiber in the structure at the you know sort of reinforcement places for, for the rig and that sort of thing and you could just feel how stiff this boat was i don't remember ever pointing this high in a monohull um it, as we did we had on the test sail we had uh, mid teens or, or low teens of wind speed and on the day we were out there sailing there was a um, a navy submarine with kind of a perimeter around it and we did this long triangle all the way over to kent island and up to the bay bridge and back and it just felt like nothing we were just reeling off you, you could tell that if you were at sea on a boat like that you'd be reeling off to miles per day very very pleasantly in a in a year in which we had exemplary sailing across the board this was the gold standard this boat was absolute rocket ship it went to weather like a freight train we all got off the boat after the sail and sort of looked at each other like we were we were stunned it was just such a marvelous sailing experience it, the solaris was a good boat but boy it, it, uh, it went in the ring against muhammad ali in his prime it was a great boat yeah that's great well th congratulations to italia yachts on the 14.98 this year's best performance cruiser and boat of the year. Uh, moving on, as you guys well know, the multi-hull fascination is easily the fastest growing segment of the sailboat scene. And to back that up, I think more than half the contestants in this year's boat of the year fleet had two or more hulls. So arguably this was the most competitive category in this year's contest, meaning that uh, really at its base, catamaran owners today have a lot more to choose from than ever before. Uh, this year's nominees were the XS14, the HH Catamarans HH44, the Sea Wind 1170, and the Vision 444. And the winner this year for cruising catamaran under 50 feet is Vision Yachts 444. Uh, Mark, you noted that uh, the Vision 444 is only one of the only cats that you can recall having a full and proper nav station. And the walk-in workshop forward in the starboard bow was brilliant, end quote. Um, you want to expand on that a little bit? 
Yeah, I mean, it's just catamarans these days, just, you know, you, you walk aboard them and it's, it's, it's a lot of them, it's like sailing is an afterthought. And on this boat, it was all about the sailing. I mean, you had this command center, uh, forward facing, great visibility, all your tools right there for, you know, keeping watch and long passages. And uh, who doesn't like a little man cave where you got a vice and a workbench? Brilliant stuff. Every now and then we get really lucky on these on these test sails too, and we get to sail with the owner. This was a case where um, the owner really revealed a lot about the boat for us. He he had bought the boat in South Africa from the builder, sailed it to Mozambique, and then back over to the United States. So he had fourteen thousand miles on the boat in his wow. first year of ownership. So we really wow. learned a lot about the boat from him. And uh, he he obviously is a guy who who loves his boat, and and the boat showed why. This was really an exciting boat to sail. It was a really international uh, fleet this year, this this class, a South African boat, one built in Vietnam, one built in China, another build, boat built in France. It was really a very interesting cross-section of what is now available in, in uh, sort of the mid-sized catamarans. But as Tim mentioned, uh, an enthusiastic owner who really could break down the systems and had some real first-hand experience. And you can see how well he loved the boat. It made a big difference, frankly, in our in our judging. And uh, at, at the end of the day, the Vision 444 was the, the clear winner in this class. And a big congratulations to the best cruising catamaran under 50 feet this year, Vision Yachts 444. Now let's go over 50 feet, best cruising catamaran over 50. Uh, this year, two longtime pillars in the production catamaran community went head to head for the title of best full size cruising cat of 2024. Similar LOA, a nearly exact price point of just around 1.6 million, both built in France. Herb, as you said before, you know, I, I think you even compared this matchup to a heavyweight uh, boxing bout between Ali and Frazier. It's almost a crime that there could be only one champ in this category. Um, this year's nominees were the Fontaine Peugeot Aura 51 and the Lagoon 51. And the winner is, unfortunately we can only choose one, the winner was the Fontaine Peugeot Aura 51. Mark, you said you really liked their decision to locate the helm station on the aura partway between the cockpit and the flybridge, which they call the Sky Lounge. Um, tell us a bit more about that layout and what you liked about the boat. Well, you know, Andrew, I've, I've been lucky enough to get to sail quite a few cats in the last few years between chartering and various trips. And, you know, it's the, the flybridge is a beautiful party place. If you're on a, a charter in Tortola, I mean, there's no better place to hang out and have a few cocktails and watch the world go by. But for the actual job of sailing the boat and being able to see around and, and stay in communication with people in the cockpit, the people in the cabin, the people up in the deck, that, that Fontaine Peugeot, Peugeot layout is just is perfect. You're, you're kind of halfway in between. You can still talk to the guys in the flybridge and you can still you know, communicate with somebody down below. And it's, if I think for a cruising couple, uh, uh, it, it's a it's really a practical layout and for a charter you can still have an awful lot of fun on that boat there's something really nice they do with that helm too which is that they separate out the uh, workstations of the you know all the sheets and halyards that come to the winches um, there's some separation so you could have two people working one at the helm one at that that sort of um, you know working rigging you know running rigging workstation or one person can stand between the two use the autopilot and run it that way i thought that helm was very nicely designed this really was a heavyweight battle that went 15 rounds lagoon and fontaine peugeot two of the big uh iconic um french catamaran builders they go back they've got a lot of history and uh i think i, I agree with my colleagues the consensus at the end of the day was we were looking at a boat more from a cruising point than a chartering viewpoint. Both of these boats will be in, used out for private ownership and in the charter trade. But that arrangement with the helm station, the way it's set up is really set up really sweetly for a couple. And I think at the end of the day, that's what swayed us to pick the Fantan Peugeot. If I could just jump in and say though, that Lagoon was an awful nice sailing boat. Boy, I, I wouldn't mind at all taking that for a, a, a trip from here to there anytime. Real good boat. Without a doubt. Uh, well, congratulations to Fontaine Peugeot, the Aura 51, this year's cruising catamaran, best cruising catamaran over 50 feet. Let's take a pause for a minute. You guys, when you're busting your tails out there in the sea trials, you need access to these boats on the water and uh, a company comes through for us seemingly just about every year. 
to provide that access. And this year you had a pretty sweet ride um, for this year's Boat of the Year contest. You guys arrived for the test sales in style aboard a 2023 High Field Patrol 540. We just want to thank our sponsor, the Club Boat Charter Company, for providing that sweet ride this year. So definitely a special thanks to those guys for their ongoing commitment to supporting the sport of sailing. Moving on now to Performance Trimaran, Best Performance Trimaran Boat of the Year 2024. For the first time ever in, I think, Boat of the Year history, it's a new class being introduced, um, Performance Trimarans. And to make things a little spicier, the two nominees not only share the same length overall of 40 feet, but they also came in at near identical price point of around 800,000 for the base boat. And this year's nominees were the Dragonfly 40 and the Rapido 40. The winner of this category, best performance trimaran is Dragonfly 40. Mark, you, you noted that as you finished up your sea trial aboard the Dragonfly 40, you scribbled, quote, top shelf with three exclamation points in your notebook. Uh, Tim, I think you said this was an exquisite yacht in every detail, full of great sailing details. Um, guys, tell us a little bit more about what put Dragonfly over the top. We had the, uh, the very good fortune of actually sailing the boat with the designer and owner of uh, the company that builds Dragonfly, Yen Corning. And uh, talk about a guy who is who was uh, put on this earth to build boats and, and make them go quick and and really explain how well they uh, they put them together. He was a he he did a great job putting showing us the boat, giving us a tour of it. And there wasn't one thing on this boat that he had not seriously considered. And I'm talking about the preventer, the cockpit layout, the the armas. It's just a spectacular boat. I love the Rapido, but man oh man, this Dragonfly was really one of the most exquisitely detailed boats that we've had a chance to sail this year. It was it was just phenomenal one of the details that i thought was really nice is um a lot of the these trimarans have some some way of you know bringing the amas in um you know there's different technologies for doing it so that you can get the boat into a slip for instance or um you know sometimes onto a trailer not necessarily with these 40 footers but um the way they do it on the on the um, dragonfly is that the uh, amas stay in plane while the crossbars sort of move aft. And not only that, but they sink down six to eight inches to give more stability and buoyancy um, so that these boats are stable when you when you pull it into that. There were just, you know, detail after detail after detail like that with this boat was really, really top notch. Yeah, we sailed, we sailed this boat in, in, in pretty light wind. The, uh, the builder said if it was blowing 20, the boat would be going 20. Well, it was blowing 5.2 knots and we were going six. That doesn't happen very often for cruising wow. world judge. Yeah, it's just a great boat. Thanks for that, guys. Uh, best performance trimaran for the year 2024, Dragonfly 40. Congratulations. Moving on to best sport boat. Herb, you said it best. It's not every year that the Boat of the Year judging panel has the opportunity to review cool little boats that totally accentuate the pure joy of sailing. And they get a bonus point if they offer simple but functional camper cruising accommodations. I know that all three of you guys at your core, you're first and foremost sailors. So when a nifty pair of multi-hulls nabbed nominations this year, I imagine you fellows were champing at the bit to sail these puppies. Um, we'll hear a little bit more about that in a sec. The nominees were the Astus 20.5 Sport and the Exquisite 30 Sport Cat. And this year's winner in the sport boat category goes to the exquisite 30 sport cat. Herb, uh, I got a quote from you here. I gotta say, this is this is just a great quote. It's a niche boat for sure. And at 250,000, I think the broader market for it is pretty limited. That said, I'd love to own one. You guys, tell us a little bit more about this, uh, this cool little 30 footer. Well, it's an unusual concept. We've sailed the big exquisite cruising cast before, big full found, all oceans access, uh, go anywhere, big catamarans. The sport cat that they've developed here, they're using at their base in the Bahamas as a training boat for people who buy their big boats to get a feel for uh, catamaran sailing and multi-hull sailing. And so it's kind of a niche, that's what I meant by a niche boat. It's kind of aimed at that, but this is a boat that'll fit in a container. You can ship it anywhere. It's simple to put together. It's quick, it's fun to sail. We had a lot of fun on this boat. It was interesting sailing this one. You know, there's a lot of boats that are, you could describe as forgiving, where, where there's sort of a wide space where, you know, you get you, you get near the groove and the boat will really react. This one had a narrow little little spot where she'd just take off and power up. 
And uh, I think for the training aspect of what they're looking for, it's it's really spot on. It's going to give the owners of those you know 50 foot catamarans the real experience, the tactile experience of of um, you know how a boat when it's really dialed in right can can respond. Yeah, you know, I, it, the boat was was real simple. Um, it was uh, uh, real easy to sail, but you could you could dial it in pretty much any way you wanted. Um, like Tim said, there was a very narrow window of forgiveness. It took a little getting used to running from Ama to Ama. I think it was like almost a 20 wide, 20 foot dash from one side to the other with this big long hiking stick. But boy, it was kind of it was fun. It was good footing, and uh, as soon as you got over there and started playing with the traveler, I come out of every tack. The boat just soared out of it. It was fun. Again, congratulations to the Exquisite 30 Sport Cat, Best Sport Boat, Boat of the Year 2024. Typically, just about every Boat of the Year contest, a nominee is so unique that you guys, the judging panel, decide to honor it with a special tip of the cap. And for 2024, I understand this prize goes to the HH Catamarans HH44. Um, can you guys tell us a little bit about why you're wanting to give special recognition to that particular boat? This was a really remarkable boat. It came in a little late to the show. It actually didn't make the show. It was on a freighter. It came in after the show, but we did have a chance to inspect the boat afterwards. Uh, this has one of the most unusual hybrid propulsion charging systems that we've seen. I think that we were all really blown away by it. I'm going to defer to Tim here on this one because he really has a better understanding of the system. This is what really made it the judges' special recognition award. Yeah, so this boat was, first of all, the the structure of the boat, an, an epoxy structure, was, um, you know, one of the finest built structures of, of boats in the whole fleet. But then the systems was far and away. I, I think we were looking at the future. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things we have to look at when we're looking at the future is, is, you know, making sure that everything works. And one of the things we really wished was that we had actually a little bit more of a time cycle uh, to see how this is playing out in the in the you know how it's going to play out in the field. So I think when we come back a year from now and see how this is going, I, I think what we saw in this boat, uh, we're going to see on a whole lot more boats going forward. But uh, basically, on the same shaft, they're using both an electric uh, electric motor and a diesel engine, and there's all kinds of different configurations you can do with your power systems based on that. Uh, based on that combination it was it was really really stunning you're gonna see every every time we see an hh catamaran it's 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 pushing the envelope in some way um the early ones were just big all carbon uh powerful go fast machines this one's got a bit more fiberglass in the construction it's a little bit lower price point but again it pushes as tim was saying really pushes things into a different direction uh, it's 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 not a simple boat, but if you want to go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole, this is a great boat to do it on. Whether you're sailing it or it's, you know, almost endless adjustment in sail trim, very very responsive to everything you do to it. Uh, a really amazing boat, but boy oh boy, it's, it, it keeps you on your toes. Those are some uh, those are some pretty pretty nice remarks from from our esteemed panel of judges here on that HH44. Congratulations to HH Catamarans. Um, moving on to our final award of the day, of the year, I should say, is our best overall. And this year, um, of all 19 boats in the fleet, I know you guys had a, a bear of a time coming down with, with just one winner. This year, that winner is the Genoa Yachts 55. So we talked about the Genoa Yachts 55 as the best full-size cruiser in that category. When we compare it against all the rest of the nominees of, across all the categories, um, guys, what did it for you? What put Genoa 55 over the top? You know, it's interesting with the Genoa. Uh, we're still getting sorted out in, 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 in new boat manufacturing from COVID. A couple of years ago, obviously, COVID set the world upside down. A lot of the companies did not take go into too much R&D during that period because they had such full order books for the, the yachts that they already had in development. Genoa has not been in the contest for two or three years now because of that very reason. They came back this year strong. I, for, to me, Genoa has always been a, a company that has been a kind of cutting edge. They uh, they built a little 34-footer a few years ago that was our overall boat of the year, and they sold hundreds of those boats. The, when the Dexalon craze sort of came in, they were on the cutting edge of that. 
a couple of years ago, they came around with their wraparound decks. That was a leading edge thing. And I think that this year they've done something so unique and different with the layout and the way they've structured the whole compartment. I just think that once again, we have, as you know, doing something that nobody else is doing. And I think to me, that was one of the really reasons that I voted for the you know, their innovation. To me, it was a year where we had, you know, really innovative boats. We had really good sailing boats. We had really expensive boats. We didn't have very many inexpensive boats. Um, but you know, just kind of really when you, when we looked at all the categories and all the winners of the individual categories, sort of the one that was just a little bit of a step ahead and, you know, it sailed well, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's pricey, but it's a big boat. Um, the, the innovation, the design, the layout was really unique. Um, it just, it just made, it was a, a boat that you just wanted to feel good about. That's great. Our contest always rewards boats that do the best of what their stated purpose is. That's always been our sort of what we've driven, was driven our decision making. And we choose from the category winners. And this year we felt that the you know, better, best suited its design purpose better than anybody else in the fleet. Huge congratulations to Juno Yachts 55, the official 2024 Boat of the Year winner, best overall boat. Thanks again to our sponsors, Club Boat Charter and High Field Ribs. And I especially want to thank our esteemed judges, once again, the experts who make this whole competition sizzle, Herb McCormick, Mark Pillsbury, and Tim Murphy. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. It was a great year. Sail fast, mates. Yeah, thanks, Andrew and Cruz. We're for letting us go out and do it. Thanks again to our readers and viewers for joining us on this year's Boat of the Year Big Reveal. For Cruising World, I'm Andrew Parkinson.